ارحلوا عن هذه الديار كنت جاي سيارة المستوطن وظل ماشي البنات قطعا ضرب هنا ظل طالع So it's just because he's got a British passport that he can't go down there, or is it because he's Palestinian? Because he's not he's Jewish. Through July and August 2014, the world's attention was on the Gaza conflict. Sparked by the murder of three Israeli teens, the conflict came to a close with the announcement on September the 1st of new Israeli settlements in the West Bank, a move which Israel's economics minister, Naftali Bennett, described as an appropriate Zionist response to murder. Condemned by the international community, the settlement plans have only added to tension in the West Bank. So Vice News sent Palestinian-born filmmaker Median Daria to find out more about the current situation for Palestinians living in and around Israeli settlements in the West Bank. We followed Leila and Nadia, two American-born Palestinian activists, as they crossed from Israel into the occupied territories. Both are members of the International Solidarity Movement, a group focused on promoting the Palestinian cause. My name's Layla and I'm from the U.S. Um, I was born in Dallas, Texas. My dad is Mexican and my mom is from Jerusalem. My mom has actually never been here and my grandparents haven't been here since the 50s and they weren't able to return because they were outside of Palestine when it was like taken by Israel. All Palestinian refugees don't have the right to return where like any Jew from anywhere can return even if they don't have any like direct ties to Palestine. It's an extremely humiliating process going through the border. I always get interrogated. Every time I've been, they've threatened me. Uh, well, we're not sure if you're going to be able to come in. We might have to send you back to Jordan. And they just make it an extremely difficult process, I think, almost so that you won't want to come back. We arrived in East Jerusalem, annexed by Israel after the Six-Day War, but still recognized by the international community as part of the Palestinian West Bank. The Al-Aqsa Mosque is the third holiest site in Islam, and recent months have seen intermittent restrictions on access for young men, which the Israeli government claims is to reduce potential disturbances. Under Israeli fire, the crowd quickly dispersed. We decided to leave Jerusalem and headed south to Hebron, the largest city within the West Bank. Despite being firmly within Palestinian territory, 20% of the city is under Israeli control and it's home to a Jewish settler community of around 500 people. We're in Hebron and it's under Palestinian control, like the PA is control, Palestinian Authority. So there's not supposed to be like any military presence at all. But there's times where um, settlers will come into this area and the army will completely protect them. The Israeli soldiers can basically come in whenever they want and when they're here they have power over the PA police. This checkpoint was just rebuilt. It was burnt down in clashes. You could still like walk through it, but they wouldn't allow people to walk through it. This street here leads to Shahada Street, where Palestinians aren't allowed to walk. There are a lot of abandoned houses on the way, um, where Palestinians aren't allowed to live anymore. You can also see all the Israeli flags trying to make claim to the territory. Everywhere there are flags. This is the woods. Why are British? But why he's got? He's a British person. He's got a British passport. Why? Because passport. I'm Palestinian. Representing from Palestine. That's why. Yes, I'm British can. like her. Exactly. He can't this go. Is. So it's just because he's got a British passport that he can't go down there, or is it because he's Palestinian? Because he's not Jewish. 
He's not Jewish. But I'm, I, I'm not Jewish, <laughs> she's not Jewish, not and Jewish. she's not Jewish, but we can walk down this way. Every day. You're from, he's from Palestine, and you can go. He's from Britain, he's got a British passport. Yeah. He's British. Yeah. A green passport. So yeah, he can and he has a red passport. And uh, green. This is the rule, you can go. And he has his little settler protecting him. I work here, but uh, not allowed to be as Palestinian. Not allowed to be inside the Shuhada Street. The army stopped me every day. It checked my ID. The Shuhada Street, the same like Ghost Town Street. So as Palestinian, very difficult situation for us. This is a protection for settlers. No, no protect any Palestinian. The settlers also every day, you want to kill us because you stay here. This is our city. انت عمالك انت بتشوف احنا لما نبدأ ندخل عدورنا بطريقة يعني هذا وقف وفتش ورفع ايديك وهويتك وين ساكن ما بتعرف يعني اذا لما انا اذا لما اختيار عمري 65 سنة لما بوقفني واسألني و... Right now we're standing on a Palestinian home and you can see uh, these new buildings over here are settlements and um, you can see over there there's a soldier watchtower because wherever there are settlers there are always soldiers protecting them um, and basically you can see like how close Palestinians and settlers live to each other um, and this house especially has experienced a lot of harassment from settlers because they're so close. The water tanks here, how that I'm in the uh, This is um, like bullet holes so a lot of the times they'll like shoot the water tank so that it'll lose the water. So the soldiers come from all over the place. We have soldiers speaking with American accents, Canadian accents, um, Russian accents. The soldiers, they protect the settlers. They don't protect the Palestinians. The creep of Israeli settlements into internationally recognized Palestinian land is another major concern within the West Bank. We traveled north to the Nablus governorate to meet a local mayor who offered to show us how the Israeli settlements are expanding. في الجهة الشمالية في عنا مستوطنة على التل هناك اللي هي سبعة 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 هي امتداد لمستوطنة جدعني مستوطنة إتمار هاي المستوطنات بتحاول تنزلك باتجاه المرتفعات اللي موجودة شرق عقربة وتمتد جنوبا لحد مستوطنة معالي فرايم اللي واقع إلى الشمال من أريحة بهدف فصل عقربة عن أغوارها عن أحواضها الطبيعية وأراضيها الزراعية الخصبة طبعا المواطنين متنبهين والبلدي متنبه لها الخطوة الخبيثة بصراحة وبلشنا ندفع المواطنين باتجاه الحدود الشرقية لعقربة These Israeli settlements don't just consume Palestinian land they also impede one of Palestine's largest industries agriculture Burin is a town supported by the olive oil industry The Israeli authorities control access to many olive groves planted near Israeli settlements meaning some families are only given a few days to harvest large areas of their crops. This has led to international and Israeli volunteers coming to help with the harvest. My name is Rabbi Yechiel Greniman from Rabbis for Human Rights. Uh, I'm just coming into the village of Borin with a group of uh, Israeli and international volunteers and we are going to be working near an illegal outpost called Givat Ronen. Uh, to help um, a local farmer uh, with access to his land to pick his olives. Please uh, don't shout and don't uh, talk too much because they may hear us, the settlers may hear us, and, uh, because uh, apparently they don't even know that we are here. My name is Yona. It's already my 12th year volunteering here with the Rabbis for Human Rights, planting new trees instead of the ones that were cut by the settlers. I doubt whether I do help the Palestinians, but at least I help myself that I can watch my face in the mirror. Uh, we're coming here to show solidarity with the people who live here and oppose to the behavior of the settlers and to the pressure of the army on everyday life of people here. And um, we do educational work. We also have protests where there have been attacks against mosques. We came when a Quran was burnt and brought a new Quran. I don't know what else I can tell you. Inshallah, we will in the long run succeed in bringing change. 
I've been to Israel several times and I have a lot of Israeli friends. Then I decided that maybe I want to go across the wall and want to go into the West Bank. I gotta be honest, when I, you know, when I crossed the border, when I went into Palestine, it wasn't more like than two or three days before I could see, like, there was no objective, like, side of this. When you hear, like, they have these incredibly frightening stories about what they've been through. And it was really my point before I got down here that I really didn't want to get colored. Like, I would stay objective. I would, I would try to, like, see the point of both sides or from both sides. But, yeah, you just, that's not possible. It's not. In other parts of the West Bank, access to olive trees is completely denied. We attended a protest against such bans at Kafar Kadum. And the military will come from down there. They're also like running up here, so they're approaching from different sides. So you don't really know where they are. Like they can come down here from behind the houses. As the fire from the Israeli security forces got heavier, we pulled back from the confrontation. We left Kafar Kadum and headed to meet a woman whose five-year-old daughter, Inas Khaled, was killed in a hit and run. An Israeli settler was driving the car. Inas is one of the latest victims to be killed in a road traffic incident involving a car driven by a settler. كنت أنا طالع أجيب إناس عن الشارع من الباص كالعادة يعني مثل كل اليوم لقيت لما أنا وصلت الرصيف من تحت والبنات على الرصيف الثاني كنت جاي سيارة المستوطن قلت لما هو كرب على البنات أنا صرت أصرخ وأشر له في إيدي بس ما شفنا إشي رسمي بالمرة بس يعني ضربها طارت في الهواء ورجع ضربت في الشارع يعني بس يعني بنجرد رفعت إيديها ورأسها رجعت البنت غيبت عن حالها على طول رحت أجري عليها أصرخ وأصيح رحت أنا زميتها وصرت أصرخ أنا وجارتي والبنت يعني على طول غيبت ما صحت ولا ثانية ولا رمشت ولا حكت أي إشي يعني كد ما نحكي وكد ما في حدا بيرجع ناس We're in the village of Sulbat and we're walking for the 14-year-old boy that was shot last week in Jerusalem and this is his funeral. Or Hamad was shot dead by the Israeli military. They claimed he was throwing a Molotov cocktail. However, eyewitnesses have stated he was just throwing stones. After the burial, Israeli forces and Palestinian protesters squared off. We're here today protesting against the killing of Farwa Hamid. They shot him and then they kept his body for half an hour while he bled to death. So they're shooting purple bullets. They also have snipers with live ammo. 
But now they're shooting fucking tear gas. I'm a photographer from Macedonia and Switzerland and we were standing there 10 meters next to the soldiers when they just arrived and they showed us they hit me in the finger and the camera is broken and another Palestinian photographer was hit in the, in the arm. They shot with uh, those um, rubber bullets that shoot five or eight at the same time and really like straight at the journalists. There was no, no kids throwing stones next to us. We were five, six journalists next to each other. They shot straight at us. So that's what happens here. A protester we met at the clash, who did not want to be identified, offered to show us a range of equipment he claimed Israeli forces used to disperse crowds. This is the different kind of guns that the Israeli use. The rubber bullets that they usually shoot. Let's have this metal part in it. I don't know why they call it rubber. And then they have also this one, what they call steel coated bullets. But the difference is that they shoot it from this one, so you have 15 inside this can and then when the shoots go randomly and hit people so they don't control how they hit people. Stun grenade or flashbang. They also the same can that they shoot, so they can either throw it by hand or even shoot it with the rifles. They also have uh, what we call the Venom. It's like 30 cannon that can shoot 150 tear gas in less than 30 seconds. You can see made in the USA. And you can also see don't fire directly at persons, serious injury or death may result. And also we shoot live ammo. The following day, we headed to Kalandia, a checkpoint on the border between Jerusalem and the West Bank, and a frequent flashpoint between Israelis and Palestinians. It's the checkpoint between West Bank and uh, Jerusalem. There's been clashes here almost every Friday in response to the occupation. And behind us is the apartheid wall that separates the West Bank from Jerusalem. So people in Jerusalem have been suffering from the police every day and they closed Jerusalem yesterday. So that's why people here are protesting now against what's happening in Jerusalem and solidarity for our people in Jerusalem, the Palestinians who live in Jerusalem. So no one allowed. When? That was a live shot. With Israeli settlers now numbering an estimated 500,000 in the West Bank, as well as exercising control over 42% of the land, the announcement of new settlements will only further pressurize the estimated Palestinian population of two and a half million. Further restrictions can only add to the disenchantment of young Palestinians, making scenes like this one all the more common.